What's up, buddies? In case you missed it, I um, finally got a chance to track test the Mark 8 PCV valve that I've retrofitted to my 2019 GTI. Uh, this video is just going to be kind of going over a real quick update on what happened. I'm going to go over some of the data because there was one thing that was a little bit concerning to me. Um, so, yeah, real quick before we get into that, if you have not checked it out already, be sure to check out datadrivenmqb.com got lots of articles and stuff here on all kinds of fun stuff you know things on drivetrain and cooling especially is going to be very relevant for a lot of people pushing these cars um, information on how to do your own data analysis um, stuff about improving the driver and stuff like that um, go ahead and check that out if you're on Facebook go ahead and check out data driven MQB on Facebook um, so with that said let's go ahead and get into it all right, so what we're doing right here, we're using a program called Mega Log Viewer to look at all of our uh, runs, one after the other. Um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to open up some of our old stuff using the Mark 7 valve. This is from an autocross back in June. Because um, before we're looking at what happened the other day, let's take a look and see what bad looks like. Because this is the problem we were originally trying to fix. Um, so you can see here, we were getting a bunch of knock in all these autocross runs, you know, 10 degrees, you know, 11. Um, it was relatively bad at the time. I didn't really think much of it. I kind of went over this in the big, you know, 28 minute long PCV video. Um, so after that, this was from my trip to VIR back in July. Did a track night in America event. Had a lot of fun. However, it was very frustrating because the car was smoking and it was chugging so much oil down the PCV that I burned through a quart and a half over the course of three 20-minute sessions. And I honestly didn't even use all 20 minutes of all of them uh, because of issues. And I actually had to come in and clear an EPC light at one point. It was pulling so much timing that it was screwing with the uh, with the wastegate. So this right here was like the worst of it. You know, it's got, it was getting down to 18, 15, you know, 18 degrees of timing, like timing pool. Um, this is completely unacceptable. And frankly, I'm glad I didn't put a hole in the piston or something stupid like that. And you can also look and just see the frequency of knock is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, we'll take a quick look at a histogram. Um, you know, over the course of an entire session, it doesn't look completely terrible, but we'll look at the minimum values and it's, you know, it's bad. Um, most of it was correlated to the right side for right turns. And because knock was happening so frequently, this means a little bit more than if you have like a single instance that will just happen wherever. But moving on after this happened, was when I had installed the Mark 8 PCV valve and did a little bit of testing and stuff, put a crankcase pressure gauge to my, uh, or I put, I put a pressure gauge to the crankcase. Um, so after that, I tested it in August at an autocross event. And sure enough, with the Mark 8 valve, didn't have any knock like before. Like I've got this one little blip right here of 1.125 degrees. So that's completely nothing. Before we go any further, it is important to know that the way that these ECUs work is that they are very sensitive and they are meant to pull timing. Um, the factory logic, even if you log a bone stock car, and especially if you beat on it some, um, you're going to get little knock events here and there. It's very common to happen, especially in like transient situations where you're in the middle of getting on throttle or getting off throttle or sometimes even in the middle of a shift. Um, a lot of tuners numb the knock sensors or they raise the thresholds um, to where they will actually be detected. Um, and as a result, you know, it might not be picking up as much. As a full disclosure, my knock sensors are numbed by 10%, but they were numbed by 10% at VIR as well. So with that said, um, there was another autocross event, and this was in September, and with the Mark 8 valve, and there was not a single bit of knock registered. Um, you know, it was a very good event. 
Um, had a lot of fun there. Um, and funny enough, I noticed this after I had come home. So the first event I actually tested on my higher boost map where I was pushing like 20, it was like peaking at about 25 PSI. Sometimes it would overshoot to 26, 26 and a half or so, whatever. Um, at this event, I completely forgot to change the map that I was on. I was running in map number two, which is the lower boost uh, tune the entire time. So a little bit safer, of course, but it's whatever. Wasn't really a great test of, you know, trying to force as much pressure into the car as possible. But bottom line, I was running like very little boost at VIR when uh, during, I believe it was this session here. Um, yeah, my boost was peaking at 22 PSI. So I was still on one of those little weenie maps um, then as well. Um, so that brings us to this past weekend, which I've been looking forward to for quite a while at Summit Point Fastivus. You know, I made a spicy tune, spicy for track things at least, in my opinion, you know, pushing my comfort level, but, you know, spiking up to like 27 PSI. I was running that. I did run a slightly weaker map in the very first. Um, I was running my map one, which is hot, heavy on timing, but uh, shorter on boost. Um, only in the first session. Second session, I was on map three the entire time. But basically, I got through all of the first session, all of the second session. And then in the third session here, I had this one blip. You know, everything here is, you know, negative one and a half to negative 2.25 degrees. Most tuners agree that, you know, as long as you're not seeing more than negative three degrees on any single cylinder or negative four degrees average, I believe, or maybe it's two and a half average, whatever it is, um, you know, to not, not worry about it. You know, my knock sensors are not numbed very heavily and I'm letting them still do their job um, to keep the car safe. And this is all happening, mind you, at, you know, let's pull the temperature tab, you know, 258, 260 degree oil. Um, you know, it's average 258 degree oil over that long session there. Um, in the second session, it was, you know, even a little bit higher at 265 average. Um, but getting back to the timing, this one little blip right here, I was super concerned about because I looked at it and I was like, oh no, man. Um, you know, because, you know, I retrofitted the PCV valve and it seemed like it was doing good right up until here. Um, so I decided to look into it just a little bit closer. I overlaid the video here so that we could see exactly where it's happening. So I'll go ahead and let that play real quick right now. You can watch the knock retarding these gauges to the right there. So if you catch that, it's just hitting the curb and turning the wheel and getting on the throttle all at the same time. kind of all came together and registered as knock. It's not the typical conditions that we normally see it under. You know, it's not under a hard, uh, it's not immediately following particularly hard braking. It's not a hard right-hand turn. It was literally, you know, just a hard hit to the car that happened to coincide with getting right back on the throttle at the same time. So, I think that this little bit right here can largely be ignored as a fluke. Um, these cars will pick up knock retard if anything is, you know, banging around in the engine bay and stuff. Um, I do have a um, aftermarket downpipe. It's an ARM catted downpipe. It does not have a bracket that holds it to the block like the stock one does or I know there's like one or two aftermarket cats that have that function or have that uh, bracket there as well to stabilize it and keep things, you know, more solidly mounted. Um, so my guess, my best guess is that maybe, you know, something got jiggled around. Um, I'm on the stock motor mounts. I do have an 034 upper and lower torque mount inserts, um, but that's it. So it could have been any number of those things. And unlike the VIR log, you know, where it logs a bunch and it just keeps doing it over and over and over again. So it's 
not super concerning to me, but I did want to be fully forthcoming with you guys. Um, so yeah, that is the update there. If you have not checked it out yet, you can go to YouTube and you can go to Data Driven MQB. If you do me a favor, like and subscribe, it would greatly help be helpful. Um, my main hope is just to get the channel to the point where I can make enough money a year to pay for the web hosting fees for Data Driven MQB. Um, I'd like to maintain it as a source. Eventually, I'll add a resources section for quick links to the useful stuff. Um, but in the meantime, you know, check out some of this stuff. I've got all the trip reports here. The one for Summit Point will be coming up very shortly. Um, so, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. And let me know in the comments if you have done anything with the Mark 8 PCV yourself and or if um, you plan to or have any results from it. Love to hear it. Thanks.